Welcome to Big Pool Discipleship 101, The Bible in a Year, Week 20, 2 Chronicles 13 through 36, from Abijah to Cyrus. 2 Chronicles 13 begins two centuries of border wars between Israel and Judah, lasting until Israel's Assyrian captivity in 720 BC. In the Battle of Mount Zemaraim, both sides lost. Abijah of Judah failed to reunite Israel, and Jeroboam I of Israel lost half a million men. How important is Abijah's saying in verse 12, that God is with us as our captain? In 2 Chronicles 14, what good did Asa do? How important was his short prayer in verse 11? What lesson do we learn from it? In 2 Chronicles 15, what covenant was made in verses 12 to 15? How important is a heartfelt covenant with God? In 2 Chronicles 16, what huge mistake did Asa make? How insulting to God is it when we trust others more than Him? What happened to God's prophet and others? Are God's faithful messengers any more popular today amongst corrupt leaders? Did even sickness lead Asa to seek God? In 2 Chronicles 17, how did Jehoshaphat strengthen true religion? What happened after national religious education in verse 10? In 2 Chronicles 18, how were great riches and esteem both a blessing and a curse to Jehoshaphat of Judah? How important is Micaiah's example of delivering an unpopular message to Ahab of Israel and remaining faithful to God? In 2 Chronicles 19, what was the message from Jehu the seer to Jehoshaphat? How important is it for judges, national, community, and business leaders to heed verses 6 through 10? In 2 Chronicles 20, what gave Jehoshaphat victory? How important is it to seek God's help? In 2 Chronicles 21, why do the children of faithful people sometimes turn totally evil? What does it say about Jehoram that no one was sorry when he died? Who will cry at your funeral? In 2 Chronicles 22, what does Ahaziah's reign reveal about the importance of righteous counsel? In the drama that ensued between the evil woman Athaliah and the good woman Jehoshiba, how do we see God's hand? Do we see the promise of a Messiah descended from David and the salvation of the world needing a miracle here? In 2 Chronicles 23, how does the rejoicing at the victory of Jehoiada the high priest and Joash the young king Remind us of another descendant of David and high priest who will have victory over all evil. Have we allowed the son of David to have victory over our hearts? In 2 Chronicles 24, how zealous was young Joash to repair the house of worship? After Jehoiada's death at age 130, how disastrous was the counsel given to young Joash? How important is it for us to seek and follow wise counsel? In 2 Chronicles 25, we learn about two-faced Amaziah. Why was he so half-hearted? In what way can we worship God and idols today? How can pride bring us low like Amaziah? In 2 Chronicles 26, Uzziah was a hard worker who sought God, prospered, and became powerful. What was his downfall in verse 16? What does this say about assuming that anyone has the right to do any holy office in the church? In 2 Chronicles 27, how much better was Jotham than his father Uzziah? In 2 Chronicles 28, how bad was King Ahaz of Judah? Did times of trouble lead Ahaz to repentance? If we do not humble ourselves before God, will he humble us? In 2 Chronicles 29, what did Hezekiah do in the very first month of his reign? Does this story reveal how worship of God and national blessings go hand in hand? Did Hezekiah lose any time in making an offering of atonement for the sins of former government and religious officials? In 2 Chronicles 30, 
Why did they celebrate a late Passover? Are there Bible instructions which permit this? How did most people react in verse 10 to the invitation to worship services in Jerusalem? Did some come anyway? See verse 25. In 2 Chronicles 31, what were Hezekiah's religious reforms? Are there Asherah poles, sex symbols, today which people worship? Why was it important that the Levites be freed to devote themselves fully to God's service? To what does the author attribute Hezekiah's success in verse 21? In 2 Chronicles 32, Sennacherib of Assyria asks Hezekiah what he trusts that he could possibly think he can survive an Assyrian siege. Hezekiah and Amos pray. God saved them. How do Hezekiah's answer and faith relate to our day? Is the church today being besieged? How is Hezekiah's pride a warning for us? How is pride an ever-present danger when we're blessed? In 2 Chronicles 33, after sin and punishment, Manasseh finally repented. How merciful is God to Manasseh? How was Ammon worse than his father? In 2 Chronicles 34, was Josiah different than Ammon? How much better is it to dedicate ourselves to God early in life, as did Josiah, rather than later after a life of sin, as did Manasseh? What transformational effect did reading the Bible have on the king and the nation? In 2 Chronicles 35, Josiah celebrated Passover, then died in battle because he didn't inquire of God. How important is it to pray before acting? In 2 Chronicles 36, the last four kings rule before the fall of Jerusalem. Jehoahaz was deposed by Egypt. Evil Jehoiakim, evil Jehoiakin, and finally evil Zedekiah were each attacked by and exiled to Babylon. After the 70 years prophecy was fulfilled, Cyrus of Persia allowed the Jews to return to their land. Have we, in the Western Church, Protestant, Catholic, Pentecostal, sinned against heaven by worshiping the modern equivalent of pagan idols? Are we now in a period of captivity to Babylon? Will there come a time when God will restore the Western Church? Well, that's it for this time. Until next time, God bless you.